Good morning, afternoon, or evening. How y'all doing today? Welcome back to Mr. Morrow's Algebra 2 class. And bless you. Um, guys, today we're going to start Chapter 6. And literally, just to hopefully ease your minds a little bit, Chapter 6 is almost identically the reverse of Chapter 5. In Chapter 5, we learn how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide polynomials. Here in Chapter 6, we're going to learn how to factor polynomials and factoring is literally the reverse of multiplying using a distributive property but in order to multiply by and factor out monomials you must remember both the exponent or power properties and the distributive property if you know this life is going to be easier okay if you don't know this it's going to make it very difficult for you so i'm going to fly through this since we just had a test on this gentleman, okay? And when we're talking about this, if I got a to the m times a to the n, please remember it's a to the m plus n. Please remember that when you multiply the same base, you simply keep the sign, or keep the base, rather, and add the exponents, literally. a to the m divided by a to the n equals a to the m minus n. We learned how to cancel it out, but in essence, please remember that when you divide the same base, you keep the base and subtract the exponents. When you raise a power to a power, please remember that you keep the base and multiply the powers. You're going to distribute the outside exponent to all the exponents inside of the parentheses. And last but not least, remember the distributive property. When I have an outside number being multiplied to a polynomial, I'm going to literally distribute that outside value or polynomial or monomial to every single term. And I did forget one here. I don't know why I didn't put it. But if I have a to the negative n, please remember that's 1 over a to the n. And a to the 0, anything to the 0 power equals 1. Remember that, please. So this should be, I mean, perfect for you guys. So now that we got that out of the way, let's get to business. Factoring monomials, okay? or GCFs from polynomials. First of all, vocabulary is huge. If you guys don't know the difference between a monomial or a polynomial or a monomial and a binomial or a trinomial, please go back to chapter five and relearn those. In order to understand factoring, okay, monomials from polynomials, you must remember what a factor is. So think about it, guys. A factor is any real number or polynomial that goes into another real number or polynomial evenly without a remainder. Let's go back in time. The factors of 20 are 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20. Why? Because those are numbers that go into 20 evenly without a remainder. Now, the greatest common factor or the GCF is the largest common factor between two or more terms. So for example, the GCF of 70 and 40 is going to equal 10. Why? Because 10 is the largest common factor to both 40 and 70. That's what GCF is. This is old school stuff. Now we're going to learn how to work with this with polynomials. How does it apply to polynomial? Well, in essence, factoring a polynomial reverses the distributive property. So when you are factoring any polynomial, the first step is to find the GCF, if any. Guys, we're going to learn a lot of different ways to factor polynomials. No matter what, no matter what, whenever you are factoring a polynomial, my brothers, First, see if you can factor out a GCF. Super important. And if you can, do it. How does it work, Modal? Okay, you're going to factor out that term by 
dividing the GCF from every term of the polynomial and placing the GCF outside of the parentheses like so. You're going to factor out the GCF. How do you factor out the GCF? Well, first of all, you always got to place that GCF outside. And you're going to take your first term and divide it by the GCF. Then your next term and divide it by the GCF, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. At the end of the day, this is going to leave you with your GCF on the outside and the leftovers on the inside. You may say, what are leftovers? The leftovers are the term divided by the GCF. It's what's left over. So this is super, super, super important, guys. We've got to understand this concept, like, really well. So does this make sense? Okay. Now, the GCF of like variables always belongs to the variable with the lowest exponent, okay? Even though it's the greatest common factor, when we're dealing with getting common factors from variables, again, the greatest common factor belongs to the variable with the highest exponent. So when I want to find the GCF between these two polynomials, these two monomials right here, which is the highest exponent of the x's? Come again? Uh, uh, G sorry, it's the lowest exponent. It's GCF, sorry. LCM is the highest. They're reversed. So which is the lowest one? How many x's can I take out of both of these terms evenly? No, not two. I could take out six. I could take six out of here, and I could take six out of here. I'll have two left over, yes. But... My GCF is x to the 6 because I got to go to the lowest exponent. Remember, it's opposite. It's greatest common factor. You go to the lowest exponent. If I wanted to find the least common multiple of polynomials, I go to the highest exponent. I reverse it. What about the y's? What's the greatest common factor of the y's? y squared. And of the z's? z cubed. So now... Does that make sense? Sir. Sure. So when you when you want to turn green, the uh you want to double cut it. Correct, my brother. What what my boy just asked is just to make sure, Mr. Morrow, so when you want to find the greatest common factor, you're looking for the lowest exponent. Perfect. And when I'm looking for the least common multiple, I'm looking for the highest exponent. They are reversed. Excellent, my brother. Excellent. Does that make sense, gentlemen? Okay. So now, guys, let's practice because we got a long day today. Okay. I want to factor each of these. So first thing I was going to do is GCF. If it was first, you'll get the second chance. What's up, Papa? Tell me. Okay. We could go five because you're always going to look for the GCF of numbers first. Great job. So I can take out a five and I can take out an X cubed. Okay. That's my GCF, guys. So now, in order to do this well and easily, in order to get used to it, please follow my directions here. You are pulling out an x cubed. So that means you are left. Remember I said leftovers? You're dividing every single term by this monomial. This may look familiar to you. You may say, wait a second, more. we learned how to divide monomials last chapter. Yes, that's my whole point. Everything builds. So what are my leftovers here, guys? What's 10x to the fifth divided by 5x cubed? Thank you. And then followed by, followed by that is factoring out a GCF. That's a factored out polynomial, yes. <laughs> Excuse me. Now, later we're going to learn how to factor, if possible, this trinomial part. But for right now, all you can do right now, we're just learning how to factor out the GCF. Does that make sense? 
Okay. How about number two? What can I factor out of every single term? What's my GCF? Yes, sir, my brother. I can take out a two. Two Q. Yes. Now, remember, I am dividing every single term by the GCF. I know what most of you are going to do. I don't need to do that, Mr. Moore. You're silly. Okay. But I suggest you do it until you really become a master. What are my leftovers? Uh-huh. Yeah. Awesome and awesome. Thank you, brothers. That's my factored out polynomial. Does that make sense? Sir. Very good. The question was, do you have to have them in standard form? When you write your answer, yes. So for number three, what's my GCF here, brothers? Four Y cubed. So I'm taking a four Y cubed from here. I'm going to divide a four Y cubed from here and here. So now I'm going to write it in, in, in standard form. This is my highest degree. So my leftovers will be negative 7 to the 6, good, plus y cubed, plus 4. Awesome sauce. Does everyone see this? I see some people not writing down, and I don't know why you're not writing it down. This is the only way you're going to become good at it. So please write it down, gentlemen. Yes, sir. Thank you. Remember, it doesn't equal zero. Four divided by four is one, Papa. And then there's three y's here, so you take three from there, and you're left with a y cubed. Does that make sense, my brother? And then here, the y cubes cancel. 16 divided by four is four. Thank you for your honesty, kid. Next, what's my GCF, please? Yeah, nothing. Nothing goes into that. When you cannot take a GCF out, yes, sir. We could group it. Yeah. Yes, but we're not. We're going to do grouping next. Right now, I just want to focus on GCF. So, is there a GCF here? No. Can you factor this? Yes. We're going to learn how to do that in like three minutes. But do we have a GCF? Is the question here? No. So we don't have a GCF here. I can factor it. We're going to learn how to do it now in a second. Um, and actually, let me see. Yeah, you would be able to factor by grouping. Okay. How about at number five? Do we have a GCF? If so, what is it? No, it's more than X. Well, actually, no, it's not. It's just X, yes. Because nothing goes into 9, 21, negative 21 and 14. So what are my leftovers? Please. 9X cubed minus 21X plus 14. Awesome. Thank you. Beautiful. And last but not least, what is my LC? Uh, what is my GCF, if any? It's going to be four. And I'm going to divide everything here by four. So, what's my leftover? Two p cubed. No plus seven. Oh yes, because we got to go standard form. Good job. Good catch, kid. Great job. Negative, negative, uh, no, negative four, no, negative eight P squared. Yeah. Plus seven P minus 28. And that's it. Does that make sense? GCF. Yes, no, maybe kind of, sort of. Okay. Now, back to my grouping, okay? We're going to extend the GCF concept, but sometimes you will have four terms, okay? A four-term polynomial, which need to be factored. This is a very easy process which involves factoring out. This time we're going to factor out a binomial GCF from the larger polynomials whereby you create identical binomials. Here is how it works. First things first. No matter what, guys, no matter what, no matter what, no matter what, always first see if you have a GCF. 
Do you have a GCF here? No. Okay. It has four terms, right? So now in your brain, you're going to switch on, okay, four terms. Let's go to grouping if possible. So number one, group the terms with common factors forming two binomials by using parentheses. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enclose this, and I'm going to enclose this, and I'm going to add those together, and it's going to look like that. So I'm going to take the first two terms, encapsulate them in parentheses. I'm going to take the next two terms, including their signs, and encapsulate them in parentheses. And I'm going to add these two together. I'm going to take my time with this step by step. Does this make sense so far, this first step? Yes? Okay. Step two. Factor out the GCF of each binomial, which must leave you with two identical binomials. So from this guy right here, guys, what's the GCF? A 5n squared, right? So let's factor it out. I got a 5n squared. What are my leftovers? 7n minus 1. And then over here, what do I have to take out of this to make it look identical to 7n minus 1? Huh? Now, I don't take out a 3. No, if I take out a 3, it's going to be negative 7n. I got to take out a negative 3, leaving me with 7n minus 1. Do you see how I factored each binomial? I took the GCF of each binomial. And the binomial that I created must be the same as this. If it's not, one of two things. Either you messed up or you can't factor it by grouping. Yes, sir. Okay. Don't I need to make this 7? I need to make this 7n minus 1, correct? If I plot a positive 3, son, am I not going to have negative 7n? Dude, 7n minus 1 is not the same as negative 7n plus 1. It's not the same. So then what are you asking, my brother? Okay, okay. Well, what do I have to divide? And thank you for your honesty, my brother. I really appreciate it. What do I have to divide to this? Whoa, this guy right here. To make it look like this. I take out a negative 3. Because when I divide this by a negative 3 and this by a negative 3, I'm left with 7n minus 1. I need to make them identical. Okay? Guys, this is where the danger comes. If you don't know your negatives, you don't know how to divide properly, this is going to be a miserable chapter for you. So you've got to know the prior stuff. Yes, sir. That that is completely the rule, sir. I'm not trying to be rude, but you want you want to read the rules. It says factor out the GCF of each binomial, which must leave you with identical binomials. I'm not being sarcastic here, guys. It's in black and white. They must be identical. That means they have to be the exact same thing. Thank you very much for your honesty. It takes a lot of guts. So for step two to make it pretty, I went ahead and took out the 5n squared, and I'm left with 7n minus 1 minus 3 times 7 and minus 1. Now, now we're going to use the concept of greatest common factor, and we're going to factor out a common binomial and group the leftover GCFs as its own binomial. Please pay attention to this part. This is what confuses some guys. What is common factor to this and this? What's a common binomial to, to both of those terms? So can't I pull a 7n out minus 1 from both of these? So isn't this 7n minus 1 my GCF? What are my leftovers? 5n squared 
minus 3. See what I just did there? That's the magic. And there it is. Why again? Because I had a 7n minus 1 here and a 7n minus 1 here. When I factor out that 7n minus 1, I'm left with leftovers. When I divide this by 7n minus 1, I'm left with 5n squared. When I divide this guy by 7n minus 1, I'm left with negative 3. Those are my leftovers. Does that make sense? Last but not least, Moro, I don't know if I got it right. I'm a little nervous on the test. What if I don't know? My brothers, you can always just simply check your work by finding the product of the factors. Go ahead and multiply them. That better give you, oh, made a typo. That better give you the same exact thing as you started with. And they are the same. And, and cube, sorry. Thank you. See? Same thing. You feel me? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Because it's the GCF now, son. We just talked about the fact that the GCF... times the left overs. Did we not just talk about that? So that's why we're taking the 7n minus 1. Thank you for your honesty. It takes guts to ask. Thank you. Let's do another example, guys, because that's the only way we're going to learn this. Okay, I got 2r cubed plus 12r squared minus 5r minus 30. First thing I'm going to do is group them. Thank you. Next thing. What's the GCF from here? 2R squared. So I'm going to pull out a 2R squared. What are my leftovers? Uh-huh. Plus 6. Now, what must I take out of here to make it look like R plus 6? I need to take out a negative 5. So I pull out my negative 5. And what are the leftovers? R plus 6. Do you guys see how r plus 6 is a common factor to this and this? So I'm going to pull out my r plus 6 as my GCF. And then when I divide each of these by my GCF, what are my leftovers, please? 2r squared minus 5. Bada beam, bada boom, I'm done. Does this make sense, gentlemen? Now we're going to do nothing but examples. That's it. The only two things we have to learn today, GCF and grouping. Yes, sir. Now, if you want to check it to make sure maybe you think it's just not right, go ahead and multiply it out, and it better come out to the – oh, boy. And it better come out to – oh, boy. And it better come out – all right, to this guy right here. You feel me? Thank you. I don't know why it does that. Okay. May I continue? Thank you. Okay, guys. Now, let's just factor. Some of them are just going to be a GCF. Some of them are going to be four terms where we have to group. Some of them are going to be prime. Prime means you can't take out a GCF and you can't factor by grouping or by any other method. That's what prime means when you can't factor it out. So, Number one, what's my GCF, gentlemen? 4x cubed. So that means I'm going to divide every single term here by 4x cubed. And I have the GCF, which is 4x cubed, times my leftovers. What are my leftovers? 9x squared. Minus 6x, yes. Plus 2. Done. Number two. What's the GCF, the greatest common factor of these two terms here? Twelve? I don't think twelve. 
tout à fait. Let me see. 12 will start working, but it's not all the way there yet. Tell me. If 12 is not the GCF, how is 4 going to be the GCF? It's the greatest common factor, guys. 12 goes into that, but what else? What else goes into that? I think it's 48. And let me see. Yeah, it's 48. So I'm going to factor out. Actually, I'm going to factor out a negative 48x. Why negative? I very rarely want my leading coefficient to be negative. So I'm going to take out a negative 48x. When I divide that by negative 48x and that by negative 48x, I have a leftover of 7x squared minus 6. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Next, let's factor out number three. What can I, what's my GCF here? I love it. Good job. Negative 3x squared. What are my leftovers? Plus 11. How did I get that? Well, I went ahead and took my GCF and I factored it out of every term. I divided it to every term. Number four. Okay. I got four terms. I know I got four terms. Great. What do I do first? Huh? Wrong. Guys, I, I, I thought that I had repeated it so much that it was going to be an easy answer here. You always, 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 always first factor out a GCF if possible. Guys, please get that through your heads. No matter what, can I factor out a GCF? If the answer is no, fine, move on to your next technique. If the answer is yes, factor out the GCF. Yes, sir. You can combine like terms, but I don't want to yet. Because if you combine like terms, you're going to get a trinomial. Do we know how to factor trinomials yet? Not yet. So let's stick to what we know. So first, factor out a GCF. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tell me, what's the GCF? It's not five. There you go, 5z cubed. So I'm going to divide everything by 5z cubed. What are my leftovers? Uh, um, yep, I got 2z, two, no, not 2z squared. Hold on. Right, we're going by order, by uh, in standard form. So I got 2z squared, okay? Minus 3z, yeah, plus, plus 5z is 1, plus 45z cubed divided by is 9, so plus 10. Very good. So in this case, when we factor out the GCF, we already eliminated the fourth term. So now that's it, I'm done. I can't factor a GCF out. I don't have four terms left. I cannot group it. As of right now, this is where our skills can take us. We're going to learn how to evaluate to see if we can factor that trinomial. That's tomorrow. Next, I got four terms here. Okay? There's no GCF. Let's see if I can group it. Let's see if it's possible. Because sometimes it's not. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to go here. What can I take out of, what's my, my GCF here? 3x. So I have 3x, and what are my leftovers? 2x plus 1. What do I have to take out of here to make it look exactly like 2x plus 1? Take out a negative 4. What am I left with? 2x plus 1. So now, what does that factor out to? 2x plus 1 times the leftovers 3x minus 4. Does that make sense to everybody? 
Promise? Talk to me, guys. We got plenty of time. Okay. Last but not least, I'm going to shrink this up real quick so I can have space. Okay. Now. Number six, what do I do first? I got four terms here. What do I do first? Thank you. Does it have a GCF? Great job, brother. Does it have a GCF? No. no. Now what do I do? I got four terms. Group it. Okay, what's the GCF here? X squared, what are my leftovers? What do I got to take out of here to make it look like F plus two? Take out a three. What are my leftovers? x plus 2. Now, I have a common factor of x plus 2 in both of these. So when I factor out x plus 2, I am left with x plus 2, which is the GCF, times the leftovers of x squared plus 3. Does that make sense, guys? Promise. Okay. Now, let me show you how you would see this in the SAT. The area of a rectangle of a rectangle of width 2x minus 1 feet is 2x cubed plus 4x minus x squared minus 2 square feet. As shown below, find the expression for the length of the rectangle. We have two methods here. I want you to be able to understand how to use everything we've learned and then how to make it better, how to streamline it, how to make it easier. We know, hopefully, you guys remember that area equals length times width. That area is 2x cubed plus 4x minus x squared minus 2. That equals the length, which we don't know, times 2x minus 1. So if I wanted to, I can divide both sides by 2x minus 1. I could do long division, and I can find my answer. Absolutely. Or I can use a little logic. Doesn't the area equal the length times the width? So can't I just factor the area and it will give me both factors that I multiplied together to get to the area in the first place? That'd be a lot easier than dividing. So since it has four terms, let's factor it. Does it have a GCF? No. No, it does not. So now let's group. What can I take out of this first term? Or this first binomial. 2x. What are my leftovers? x squared plus 2. What do I take out of here to make it look like x squared plus 2? A negative 1. What are my leftovers? x squared plus 2. What's common to both of these? x squared plus 2. When I factor out the x squared plus 2, my GCF is x squared plus 2. What are my leftovers? Now, guys, what's the length then? Yeah, look, guys. What's the length? So my length is x squared plus 2. Moto, but I want to do it by long division. Cool, do it. That's not smart, though, and it's not efficient. Sir, That's very good memory. That is exactly the same as the second extra credit I gave you yesterday. However, you didn't know how to do this yet, so you had to divide. Yes, sir. Does that make sense, gentlemen? Questions, comments, concerns, problems, issues, dilemmas. Word. Thank you very much. Hope you learned a lot. Have a great day, and God bless you all.